generally as I can to start. What happened yesterday through your eyes? What happened? This week earlier with Habib and Artem, who is very good friends with Connor. He wasn't trying to hurt, but he felt like the Khabib thing had to be done. He is friends. Correct. People still believe that, that this was the fight that was happening. And of course, when Connor comes back, it's going to do huge business. Of course, when he takes on Khabib, it's going to do huge business. He's right. supposed to fight that fucking Khabib. I think this is the perfect time for it to happen. The fight everybody wants to see is Connor and Khabib. Then that's the fight. Enough. Enough. Phenomenal fight. Ridiculous fight. End of story. No more fucking around. That. No more fucking around. That. Well, then let's do it. Let's set it up. Setting him up with Khabib, you know, having that fight. Like, Jesus fucking Christ, that would be a giant fight. That no. might be one of the biggest MMA fights ever to make. Of course we're going to see this fight. That's, that's what everybody wants to see again, whatever the fucking order is. One guy's the former champion that had it taken from him without a loss, and the other guy came in and picked up uh, the belt where it left off. He come on 55, 4 minutes smash, no problem. He's striking guy, I like it. he come on 55, welcome. I wanna take him down, speak with him, you know, slap him. Make him nervous, like, hey, get up, let's go, where's your boxing? You know, slap him, play with him, and make him give up. Irish, only 6 million. Russian, 150 million. I wanna fight both your chicken, because this is number one easy fight in Lightweight Division. Connor come to lightweight and he talk about oh I'm greatest but you guys know beginning of the year he tap like chicken end of the year he fight for the title you know this is very interesting how this maybe he think I'm Tyron Woodrow or Eddie Alvarez I'm different you know I'm living in the street where I'm from this is different this is not about like camera here or not camera here this is not about this this is about different for me it's all my life How this guy wanna stop me? But when I go to the cage, I don't think these these chickens can stop me. I wanna fight. I'm cage fighter. I wanna cage close, referee, and let's go. I believe my words would intimidate my opponent. In American media, they label it trash talk, and I label it speaking fact. I just like to assess the situation, I like to look at my opponent, I like to look at the division. Then if somebody asks me, I speak my mind, I let it be known, I tell the truth. I don't see anything in the division that troubles me, not one of them. They don't move like I move, they don't think like I think, and they don't talk like I talk. At the end of the day, we get in a fight. I think facing me across the octagon is intimidating enough. I don't have to do anything to intimidate these people, because they already are intimidated. I just say what I feel. I say what I feel about their performances, I say what I feel about their mind frame about myself and from being around competition my whole life I, I can tell when a guy is struggling with it I can tell when a guy is not fully there 
If no one asked, I wouldn't say, you know, this is the fight business. People want to know what way we are thinking and what we are going to do to our opponent. So I understand that this happens, so I assess the situation and I speak fact. I hype myself up big, yeah? Nobody critiques me more than I critique myself. It's real. If it's not real, I won't say it. I won't fabricate something. I don't like that. I don't like when it's fixed or uh, that's weird to me. I just don't get it and I don't do it. I'm not going out purposely trying to sell the fight. I'm just speaking my mind. It just happens to walk both ways. It's a beautiful thing. It is a mismatch. I'm gonna whoop his ass, I'm gonna collect the checks, and then I'm gone. When you look a man dead in his eye, you can see it. You're nearly looking through him. I honestly believe I'm able to read the mind better than I am able to read the movement. Know yourself to know others is what Bruce Lee said. And um, I think it rings true. I know by looking at these people, I know by the body language, and maybe to the naked eye it might seem like these people are confident, but I see different. The man, Dustin, it was a main event slot. Talked a big game like he wanted it, until he got it. Then the fight happens, now we're face to face. Now he has his opportunity to say something, now he has his opportunity to do something. I see right through him. You gotta be careful what you wish for, and unfortunately for him, he got what he wished for. It was the same thing when I came face to face with Diego. These people seem to think this is all stuff out of cameras or some <laughs> Diego, I believe, taught that as well. But we came face to face and he knew there and then that it was not gonna be a good night for him. Even post fight, I felt his energy lifted. It was like, I got through it, he was happy. He was happy it was over. I don't just talk the talk, I walk the walk. One of my favorite things to do is saying I'm gonna do something and then putting in the work and then going out and doing it. It's energizing it. I have a vision in my head of what's gonna happen and every single time I've had these visions in my head, they have come to life. So I encourage it, I embrace it, I let it be known. I let these visions be known. And I say what I'm gonna do and then I do it. I said I'd knock him out in the first round and I knocked him out in the first round. You can call me Mystic Mac because I predict these things. The fight game can be mentally taxing for people, you know. A lot of people can perform in the gyms, a lot of great gym competitors, but when the lights are on and when it's time to perform in front of the millions of people watching and the packed out arenas, people freeze. Me, I don't give it. I'm only warming up.